The fallen angel Lucifer is bound upon destroying every single human being upon this planet. He delights in the death and destruction of both animal and humans. He wants to take as many people as possible with him into the flames of hell. The Bible tells us in Matthew 25, 41, Then he will also say to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed into the everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. The Bible says the hell is prepared for the devil and his angels, and the devil wants to take as many people as possible with him into the flames of hell. 1 Peter 5, verse 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. The devil is no pushover. And many times today, people will just claim power over the devil, like they can trample upon him. The Bible warns us, he walks around like a roaring lion. In this video, I will show you the four deadly methods Satan uses to catch his prey. Subscribe to our channel if you've not done so yet. Click on the subscribe button, on the bell, and then on all, and you'll receive all the latest information that we upload upon our YouTube channel. We upload videos on prophecy, theological topics, marriage, health, and homeschooling and parenting. Many, many videos that will be available to you for free when you subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you would like to donate to this channel and to this ministry, this self-supporting ministry, you can do so via PayPal, via Patreon, or if you're in South Africa, use the banking details as in the description below. All of the details is below if you would like to donate to this ministry. So let's look at the four methods the devil uses to catch his prey. Method number one is he uses temptations. All of us have experienced this where the devil comes and tempts you with the things of this world. The Bible says that there are three leading temptations, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. You can read it in the epistle of John. These three leading temptations, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, is what the devil used on Christ in the wilderness. In Matthew 4 verse 1 we read, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. The devil is the tempter. And he wants us to fall and sin against God. But God has made provision in His Son. Because Hebrews 4 verse 15 and 16 says, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The Bible promises us in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13 that there is no temptation that is too big for us to handle. Because in Christ, if we submit ourselves to Him, He is able to work through us and withstand the temptations of the devil. Christ has conquered in our stead, and He will help us to conquer the devil too. So the first method is the devil comes with his temptations. Temptations of the world. Temptations in our appetites, in our passions, in our pride, in our worldly ambition. And we need to surrender these things to Christ. Method number two, he comes and deceives. When we willfully sin against God, God cannot protect us. But when the devil surprises us into sin or deceives us into sin, God does not leave our side. The Bible tells us in Revelation 12 verse 9, So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So the Bible says that the devil deceives the whole earth. That's one of the key things that Jesus warned us against in the end of time. In Matthew chapter 24, where Jesus gives the signs of the end, he mentions deception three times. In verses 4, 5, 11, and 24 of Matthew 24, you can read where Jesus warns against deception. This is how the devil comes to us. Matthew 24, 24 says, For false Christs and false prophets will arise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the very elect. If it was possible, even God's elect people in the last days could, if it was possible, be deceived by the devil through his false prophets and false Christs. This is the second deadly method the devil uses to get us to sin against God. 
Method number three, false miracles. Revelation 16, 14, for they are spirits of demons performing signs. This is a very subtle deception. This miracle working, these signs can be even found in the Christian church, the false ones, which lead people away from the truth of the word of God. Jesus said we must worship him in spirit and truth. So miracles is not a prerequisite for you to enter the kingdom, but truth and being filled with the Holy Spirit is. Exodus 7, 9 to 13 says, When Pharaoh speaks to you, saying, Show a miracle for yourselves, then you shall say to Aaron, Take your rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and let it become a serpent. So Moses and Aaron went into Pharaoh, and they did so just as the Lord commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. This is the story where Moses and Aaron goes to Pharaoh saying that God said, Let my people go. To prove that God was in charge of this calling of Israel out of Egypt, they took the rod, threw it down, and it became a serpent. Now listen carefully what the musicians of the Pharaoh did too. But Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers, so the musicians of Egypt they also did in like manner with their enchantments. For every man threw down his rod, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods, and Pharaoh's heart grew hard, and did not heed them as the Lord had said. Do you see how important it is that we make sure that we follow biblical miracles? Because here false miracles led the Pharaoh to harden his heart and turn further away from God. So even the devil and his subjects, the musicians in the story, can enact miracles as they did the same thing Moses and Aaron did. Listen to this end time warning. Revelation 19 verse 20. Then the beast was captured and with him the false prophet who worked signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. So the Bible says that people will be deceived in the end of time to receive the mark of the beast because of miracles, false signs and wonders in God's church that will lead people to receive the mark of the beast. Method number four, he is the accuser of the brethren. Revelation 12 verse 10. Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. So the Bible says the devil is the accuser of the brethren. He accuses us because we are sinful just like him. And in his mind, it is unfair that God forgives us for our sins, yet the devil will not spend an eternity with God because of the decisions he made. Listen to Zechariah 3 verse 1 through 4. Then he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. It's the same thing that Michael, the archangel, said to Satan in Jude chapter 1. It was Jesus saying it. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand plucked from the fire? So here is a sinner standing in front of God, and Satan says, This subject is mine. And God says, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. He is a brand plucked from the fire through the blood of Jesus Christ. I read on. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and was standing before the angel, capital A meaning Christ. Then he answered and spoke to those who stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And to him he said, See, I have removed your iniquity from you, and I will clothe you with rich robes. So the Bible says, The way we escape, the four deadly methods that the devil uses to get us to fall and lose eternity is to be connected to Jesus Christ, to confess our sins to Him so that He can cleanse us, take away our filthy garments and clothe us with His righteousness, to study the Word of God and make sure what is truth, especially when it comes to miracles, so that our senses don't lie to us, to also study the Word of God to find truth so that we are not deceived by false Christs and false prophets. For when a person is deceived, they don't know it. That's what deception is. 
and then to have a living relationship with Christ, to claim His power so that we can overcome in His name, so that we are not tempted into sin. Tempted, yes, but not leading to sin, which is vitally important. As temptation is not a sin, but acting upon it is. May God help us as we cling to Christ against this mighty foe.